So Harry does go to the Invictus Games, and that seems to be safe. Is that a contradiction? That's what the video will be about. So I hope you like the video. If you do like the video, please do like it. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. Hey, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. Yeah, some folks think he didn't go to Phillips, Prince Philip's Memorial, but he's going to the Invictus Games. That wasn't safe, but this is safe. Is that true? What's going on? And uh, that's what the, this reading will be about. So we'll throw the cards and see how they come out. Okay, so Prince Harry going to the Invictus Games, uh, because that is safe, I guess. Um, so we'll see uh, how that goes. So it wasn't safe to do some things uh, in that royal uh, realm. But uh, some other things are, apparently. So Prince Harry, going to go to the Invictus Games, goes to the Invictus Games, and uh, because that's safe somehow. Interesting. What's the difference, I suppose? Prince Harry and the Invictus Games. Why is that safe? Why is that more important? What is it about those Invictus Games uh, that makes that worth some amount of risk, I suppose, being out in public. First, let's have a moment of meditation. Okay. Okay, so Prince Harry goes to the Invictus Games. That's safe. Whereas some other things, uh, he doesn't consider those to be safe. So what's what can the cards tell us about that kind of, what seems like a, a, a conflict, you know? Six cards to begin with. One, two, three, four. Keep forgetting to look at the camera. And then this is six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And what I'll do, uh, well, as I always do when I use these cards, is I will these will be revealed by what's not shown, okay? Uh, so Because we can see what's on top here, so we're going to see what's not shown. The signified card of why the Invictus Games and not something else. Why is that safe? Okay, well, okay, so it's the hangman, as we knew, uh, looking at something from another perspective. In this case, the hangman is looking right at us, but it's, it's presented to us as the hangman looking forward towards something. Maybe this hangman feels like he can see something a little more into that future. You know, the Invictus Games, uh, does, does that have to do with wartime heroes or just anyone who is um, is um, affected? Uh, I'm not sure. The challenge to that, then, is a Seven of Swords um, betrayal. So, Hangman, looking at something another in another way, but is challenged by some sort of feeling of truth, justice, rules, and law betrayal. The center, the base of this reading, then, is with this uh, Eight of Pentacles value, what Pentacles are, getting this practice down just perfectly. And look at this uh, child really watching the father uh, practice his art. In the past of this reading, with this Three of Wands, is long-term plans. Long-term plans staring us square in the face. The hope, uh, sky of this reading, with this Knight of of wands, this knight of plans, he's going to fight for the plan that he has in his hand. The likely outcome then uh, being this um, three of cups um, celebrations. The last four cards, self of that question, is going to be this five of swords um, abuse of power. The challenge to that with this two of, of wands is a short-term plan. The hopes and the fears is this, um, this is death. Um, hopes and the fears is death facing us right in the eyes. And then the likely outcome, ah, 
Ace of Pentacles, a great big uh, offer of value. So, Invictus Games, you have to look at this from another perspective. You can actually see what's ahead of you, perhaps, in these Invictus Games. And the um, challenge to that with this Seven of Swords is um, Theft and Betrayal. So being able to see what's ahead of you, challenged by theft and betrayal. Maybe he uh, has more faith in what's organized these Invictus games than he does what's organized some of those royal events, perhaps. I don't know. In the base of this reading, this Eight of Pentacles, practicing your craft. It's elusive, but uh, it's there. In the past of this reading, with this Three of Swords, uh, three of Wands, is long-term plans. Okay, This is something that needs to continue on into the future. And in the sky of this reading, with this uh, Knight of Wands, is willing to fight for this plan. And the likely outcome is uh, emotional celebrations. A lot of feminine energy there. The uh, signifier card, the self of that question, with this five of swords, takes us right back to the system of betrayal with an abuse of power. And then the um, environment that it's in, though, is short-term plans, making plans for something to continue, at least for a few steps forward. Uh, it's uh, in uh, Hopes and the Fears is this uh, death card, this end of a cycle, and... Um, not wanting to lose touch, I would guess, with those Invictus games. And then the um, final outcome is that it is, in fact, a great big offer of value. I like it. So what do you think? Was that, was that accurate? Let me know. Tell me in the comments. I read everything, all of them. I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on. So these are Los Scarabio cards. This is the Visa Versa Tarot. And uh, I'm going to tell you, the, the folks who have this idea have some difficult names, but I'm going to try to get through it. So, Massimiliano, Filadoro, Lunea, Weatherstone, and the artwork by David Corsi. So, nice, nice, nice cards. They've got that cool kind of magnetic clasp that's really neat to get. The box, if you gave it as a gift or if you received it, you think, wow, this was a very thoughtful gift. They've got all these nice little pulls that you can unpack everything easily with. And the uh, guidebook is a color guidebook, easy to read, um, and lots of thought and intention into these uh, suggestions for the divinations that you can use. Um, the cards, again, have this nice little pull that you can get them out of the box with. But what I really love about these cards, well, it intimidated me for a long time, actually, is that there's no front and there's no back. There's a this side, which is indicated by the little embellishment on the right-hand side of the, of the card. And then there's a that side, which is in, indicated by a little embellishment, embellishment on the left side of the card. So you kind of get the idea that this is um, um, the... And there's no right and there's no wrong. There's no good and there's no bad. It's just that um, a different um, view on how to divine this card when it comes up. So the problem with them is that when you're shuffling them... You know, you know, once you've dealt your cards, you know what's going to be on the other side because, you know, it's there. So, you know, you're going to know that this is a uh, King of Cups uh, right away. Uh, if that doesn't bother you, if you can divert that from your mind, the cards are beautiful. And uh, so you see that the artwork goes right to the edge. Um, they give you nice hints uh, on the cards as to how they, uh, what they are, because so, sometimes that can be an issue when you're trying to figure out uh, how to use these cards. And it doesn't matter which way you put them out, because there's a this and a that side, and uh, you've got uh, work, things to work with. So it's almost like you're getting two decks of cards in one. And uh, it used to intimidate me, but now I love using these cards. And uh, they're glossy, they're easy to use, they slide off of each other, but not too in a bad way. And um, I like to spread them out like this so that, uh, or if I have a reading for someone, let them spread them out so that people kind of get their energy into the cards. And so this is the this and that, uh, vice versa tarot. And uh, I love them. I'm Mark, my journey through tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by, we'll do it again. Ciao for now. You really make a big difference. Thank you.